Hello and welcome to special coverage on Compass. I'm Amanda Anderson, digital media specialist at Pioneer PBS, and I'm here again to look at how the COVID-19 spread in Minnesota is impacting our small rural schools and local ag economies. This special is replacing tonight's scheduled Compass episode, but you can watch all episodes of Compass anytime online at pioneer.org compass or on the free PBS video app. Superintendents and staff from two small school districts in southwest Minnesota are working differently to deliver learning packets to students, cook meals, and use this time to spruce up their empty school buildings. They're also thinking differently about how to honor their senior 2020 classes distantly. Joining me is Superintendent of Westbrook Walnut Grove, Fulda, and Lake Benton Schools, Loy Wolber, who is also a um, Pioneer PBS board member and Chad Anderson, Tracy Area School Superintendent. Thank you to the both of you for taking time out of your, what I imagine is super busy schedules. Can you describe what a, a typical day for students and teachers looks like right now? Our elementaries are, we were, we were not one-to-ones to begin with. Um, we did have that opportunity for kids to be able to access a device from the school if they needed one. Um, so we still are we're using packets. The kids that are not able to come to the school, uh, Folder, there are folks that um, we have stations set up um, with the social distancing where people can come in, get packets, and those that can't, they get delivered with the meals. And Tracy, we uh, been one to one for a while at the. Uh, 7 through 12 level and then last year we added uh, one to one in grades k through six as well and so that made the transition a little bit easier you know it was much different you know when we had uh, a virtual learning days you know in the winter when we'd have a snow day we would have a virtual learning day where the kids would do their homework at home using their their uh, school issued uh, mobile devices and uh, that was fine because it was one day where the students were able to uh, have assignments and uh, come back the next day and make things up if it didn't work. So this is you know, similar, but really a, very different as well. Right now, the academics actually plays a back seat to student engagement and interaction. You know, we want to make sure that the kids are seeing the teacher, seeing their friends, interacting with each other um, to continue to have that social and emotional learning going on. Do you feel, so Chad just mentioned, um, kind of having some practice with virtual school days but that this looks completely different do you feel like you were prepared for distance learning well i think um one thing that definitely was uh, a big help was the the way the governor did it with the planning days that was huge we're do the packets in elementary but at the same time the elementary they're still doing the google chats and the talks and I mean, they're doing scavenger hunts. They're just trying to keep kids engaged, like Chad said. But without that planning, there were some teachers that uh, I've really never used the Google Classroom, never. And boy, did they jumped in. Our first grade teachers went for a drive to find all their families that they went on their own scavenger hunt and went to every family's house, knocked on the door, stepped away and, the, and visit with the kids. It, they said it took them about four hours, but it was... The so, like Chad said, the social interaction is so much more important right now than academics. I'm wondering, Chad, so with all of these school-based support networks that have been completely disrupted, how are you teachers um, supporting special needs students or maybe students that don't have English as their first language? Our um, students with special needs, um, first and foremost, we really lean and rely on our paraprofessionals. We have asked that our paras contact every single child on their caseload every single day. And so they are calling each of those kids, talking to the children, talking to the parents, asking them, how are you doing first and foremost? How is everything going? Are you getting plenty to eat? Um, are you happy? Are you healthy? What's going on there? And then after we make sure all of their basic needs are met, they say, okay, how are you doing in English? What, uh, here's the assignment. And they are a strong um, knit group. If they hear of one child that's struggling or may not have something, they make sure that they get it. I think it brings a new appreciation um, to the teachers by the parents that uh, it, it is uh, it's a challenge. Our goal isn't to say, 
you bomb the quarter, you bomb the whole semester. That's, I think, all our schools understand that we got to help them get through this. I was wondering about internet access. You talked about that a little bit. So I am not one-to-one means one student gets one iPad or something like that. Right. So, you know, in my definition of one to one means that every child has access to a, uh, a mobile device. So the availability of all of the hardware is not an issue because we handed it out and every student has it. And we're lucky to have technology people on staff. I'm guessing here that we probably had about 85 percent of the people that had some type of Internet access. And so that last 15 to 20 percent of people that either had sporadic or no Internet, we worked hard to make sure that we found resources for them to be able to get Internet, whether it's we have some uh, um, portable hotspots in the school that we checked out to students or helping them contact their Internet provider. And I know there has been some Internet providers that have issued free Internet for 60 days. What do you think schools will be like post distant? learning. I hope the good stuff stays with us that a teacher on a uh, snow day, um, for instance, we aren't even worried about it anymore. Now it's just a we'll flip it around. No problem. We will never have never have snow days again. I have uh, all levels of kids at home, you know, so for just it's a neat thing. I have a third grader who her her teacher is just amazing. All of the teachers at the elementary, you know, at all, both of our schools are rock stars. And it's so fun to see them log on and she's able to access all of the technology on her own. She wasn't given any instruction by me. You know, it, it was really cool to be able to see what she can do. And, you know, and that's where you look at, um, uh, you know, the future. You know, what is it going to look like? I, you know, and I agree with Loy wholeheartedly is we'll never go away from, in my opinion, teacher, student, student-to-student interaction relationships in a school building. However, we might be able to do some things differently and be better because of this. You know, when you think about uh, other cool things, you know, many schools across the state are doing the hashtag be the light Minnesota where they've turned on their stadium lights on Friday nights or Monday nights and and, and showing support for 20 minutes of uh, the entire school and then also recognizing what uh, that our seniors especially um, are missing out on. What is the likely graduation scenario? We're a lot smaller in Westbrook. I think we can fit our 23 seniors this year, their parents and their siblings in the gym 10 feet apart and it'll work. Um, no receiving line and then um, you're escorted out of here and away you go. We had the ceremony. Um, the next size bigger school um, they were talking about doing the same kind of thing on the football field. Another school is talking about um, drive up um, where they um, um, do some sort of a parade like that. Um, what were you talking about, Chad? Realistically, it's going to be some um, hybrid of the traditional mixed with some new ways of doing things. You know, trying to look at things in a positive way. We're com- coming up with some really uh, innovative ideas that could be new traditions that we could start, like the parade or the something in the parking lot, or we're looking at getting banners of every single senior student and uh, hanging them on Main Street. I am so thankful of your time. I appreciate all the work that you're putting into your schools and providing to your students, and I will let you get back to it. <laughs> Before you, I just would just like to say one last thing and just recognize, yeah. you know, our Again, our paras, our teachers, our custodial crew, our cooks, our bus drivers, um, you know, all the grounds people, every, you know, behind the scenes, there's just everybody is banding together doing something and everybody's doing things differently than they've done in the past. It's uh, really important just to recognize we have a lot of people that are doing a lot of great things in a way that's never been done before. Great. Was that your lunch bell? (laughs) (laughs) That might have been a refrigerator, but it wasn't. I was worried about the toilet flushing, but (laughs) so (laughs) I picked the bad office to be, and I was put should at the next place. It's okay. No, it was great. I think you picked a great place with a lot of school sound. (laughs) Okay, I will let you go again. Thank you so much.